Before the CNE, the islands were where you'd go for roller coasters and fun. Welcome to Then and Now, the series that brings Toronto's past back to life. I am Morgan Cameron Ross. Today, we're talking about the history of the Toronto Islands. What we think of as the Toronto Islands were originally just sandbars extending from the Scarborough Bluffs. But with time, they would move westward across Lake Ontario and form, to some extent, what we see today. But the layout of the islands has also been greatly curated by the city itself, as has the Toronto shoreline. The Hanlon family was one of the island's first residents, moving to Gibraltar Point in 1862. The Hanlon family, including the famous Ned Hanlon, seen here, a top-notch competitive rower. Hanlon's Point, obviously named after the family, but it used to have far more clothes than it does now because of the nude beach. Here it is around 1900. In 1867, the federal government transferred ownership of the islands to the city. The city then divided the islands into lots for cottages, allowing for an amusement area and resort hotels. Here are some photos of how developed Hanlon's Point and the islands were in the late 1800s and around 1900. Here is the Hanlon's Point Hotel, and of course, Hanlon's Point Baseball Stadium, where Babe Ruth hit his first professional home run in 1914. Here is a photo of the famous and controversial Hanlon's Point diving horse around 1907. Hanlon's Point Hotel, seen here, burnt down in 1909, a big blow to the city at the time. Here is a very cool 1907 view of cottages on the islands with the CNE in the background. Many of those CNE buildings at the time were brand new. By the 1930s, they closed down a good portion of the amusement aspects of the island to make way for the airport. The airport would play a pivotal role shortly following during World War II. The Royal Norwegian Air Force used the airport as their training grounds in the early 40s, while their government was in exile from the Nazis. As you can see here, guarded by the Norwegians. Centerville would open in the 1960s. Many of you likely finding these photos from the 1970s, 80s, and even 90s familiar. These days, people still love and enjoy the islands, but the islands of today are so greatly different than they were before. Fewer diving horses, far more clothes, and much less baseball. That's it for this episode of Then and Now. I am Morgan Cameron Ross. Catch you next time on Narcity.